The launchpad design, first implemented with the MSP430, has been a success because of two major factors. One, it's inexpensive, and two, it's expandable. Expansion is accomplished through the booster pack connector. The Teva Launchpad implements an upgraded version called Booster Pack XL. Texas Instruments offers some booster pack kits, but many more are offered by third parties. One of those third parties is Kentech, and you'll be using their LCD touchscreen booster pack in the lab. In order to get the most from the display, you'll learn about TivaWare's graphics library. That library includes functions for drawing images, text, and shapes on the screen, as well as implementing touchscreen buttons. TI currently makes three launchpad style evaluation boards, although more are on the way. The MSP430 value line board is $9.99 US. The Teva C series launchpad board is $12.99 US, and the C2000 Piccolo launchpad board is $17 US. Expandability is an important feature of the launchpad evaluation boards, and this is accomplished through the booster pack connectors. The original format of the booster pack connector was on the MSP430 value line launchpad. That format offered VCC, ground, 14 GPIO, and four more uh, multi-purpose GPIO. The Teva and C2000 Piccolo boards utilize the XL format. This is a superset of the original, which adds two more rows of pins. You can see the outside rows of pins are noted by J1 on the outside left and J2 on the outside right. They're joined by J3 and J4 just inside of both of them. This adds USB voltage and ground and 18 additional GPIO. Some of these booster packs are made by Texas Instruments, like the energy harvesting, capacitive touch, and digital potentiometer boards, but most are created by third parties. To round out the overview, here are some additional booster packs created by third parties. The booster pack we'll be using in the lab is the Kentech touchscreen TFT LCD display with LED backlight. It's a three and a half inch QVGA screen with 320 by 240 pixel resolution and 16 colors. It's designed with the XL booster pack pinout. The driver circuit and the connector are compatible with the 4.3 inch, 5 inch, 7 inch, and 9 inch displays from Kentech. So you can use the same booster pack board and swap out the displays if you like. The Teva graphics library provides you with graphics, primitives, and widgets for creating an entire graphic user interface on Teva controlled displays. Some designers will go all the way to using Linux on a machine just to get a better graphic user interface. Here, you can use a smaller, less expensive microcontroller and design your own GUI. Note that none of the Teva C-Series devices presently have an LCD interface. That interface to smart displays is done through a serial or parallel port. The graphics library consists of three layers to interface your application to the display. At the very bottom is the display driver layer. You'll generally have to modify this code for your displays. We've had customers do this and it usually takes in the, in the range of two to three days to modify the display driver to fit with the display that they've chosen. The middle layer is the graphics primitives layer for drawing additional pieces to the screen. At the very top is the widget layer. Widgets are for tying touchscreen elements to code ba based interaction. Your application code can interface with any of the layers. The design of the graphics library has been governed by the following goals. That the components have been written entirely in C except where absolutely not possible. That your application can call any of the layers. That the graphics library is easy to understand and the components are reasonably efficient in terms of memory and processor usage. Those two goals can be somewhat at odds with each other. Code can be so efficient that you can't understand it, and if you can't understand it, you're not going to be able to use it. Lastly, that the components are as self-contained as they can be, and where possible, any of the computations that need to be performed will be performed at compile time instead of using up cycles on your CPU at runtime. 
Within the graphics library, the bottom layer is the display driver. This is the low-level interface to your display hardware. Routines for display-dependent operation, like initializing the display, backlight control, contrast, translation of 24-bit RGB values from the primitives layer to the screen-dependent color map. The display driver also contains low-level drawing routines like flush, lines, pixels, and rectangle drawing. Hardware-dependent code will require modification, like the connection to the display, the color depth, the size of the screen, etc. The middle layer in the graphics library is graphics primitives. This layer provides drawing support for lines, circles, text, and bitmap images, as well as support for off-screen buffering. Many times, you don't want to write directly to the display and have the viewer see you doing it. Instead, you can write to an off-screen buffer and then swap and show that buffer. Foreground and background drawing contexts are important, so you can put objects behind of or in front of each other. Colors are represented as 24-bit RGB values, and there are 150 predefined colors already provided in the library. Look in the Graphics Library User's Guide, and you'll find those predefined colors at the back. Also in the back of the User's Guide is a list of 153 predefined fonts based on the computer modern typeface. And as shown in the diagrams at the bottom of the screen, Asian and Cyrillic languages are also supported. Widgets are the top layer of the graphics library. Widgets are graphic elements that provide user control elements. They combine the graphical and the touchscreen elements on screen in a parent-child hierarchy so that objects appear in front of or behind each other as they're supposed to. This hierarchy can extend to multiple layers. It also determines which elements on the screen will be updated when you request an update. Canvases provide you with a simple drawing surface on which you can place controls and graphical elements. Checkboxes allow you to select and unselect actions. Containers provide you with a visual element to group your widgets and controls together. Push buttons provide you with an on-screen button that can be pressed. Radio buttons allow you to select from a group. Sliders, either vertical or horizontal, allow you to graphically select a value from a predefined range. List boxes provide you with a list of selections that you can pick from, like a pull down. There are several utilities included in the graphics library that allow you to create compatible data structures that the library can understand. F rasterize converts your font into a font that the graphics library can understand. LMI button creates custom shape buttons using a GIMP plugin. It will produce an image, for instance your company logo, for use by the push button widget. GIMP is an open source image manipulation tool. PNM to C converts a net PBM image file into a file understandable by the graphics library. Several image manipulation tools handle the NetPBM image format, including GIMP. MakeStringTable converts a comma-separated file into a table of strings for use by the ListBox widget. In Lab 10, you'll use the Kentec LCD touchscreen display on the Launchpad board to experiment with the graphics library. You'll write code that places an image, text, and shapes on the LCD. Then you'll experiment with the touchscreen by adding a rectangular button widget that controls the LED on the launchpad board. 